Please be seated. Good morning. At the parish where I grew up, whenever we found out when the bishop would be visiting, the header in the bulletin for the save the date would always read, the bishop is coming, look busy. Even amidst the jest, we have to admit that this is a fairly accurate reaction when authority figures enter our spaces. Some of us do hope that our hard work will be seen, that it will be clear how much progress we've made, and we'll get that gold star we are hoping for. For others, the boss showing up provides the perfect opportunity to point out whose fault it is that things are not the way that they are supposed to be. These are the folks who apologize on behalf of others and note how they would do things differently. Lastly, there is the complaint crowd. Those who point at the leader rather than themselves or anything else when things go awry. They like to have a list of grievances at the ready and they only need a minute of your time. I don't know if you recognize yourself in any of these scenarios or if you recognize friends or family, but whether we are always conscious of it or not, these are often the ways in which we think about God and especially of Jesus coming back in the end. Advent, the time for getting ready for the mystery of Christmas and and certainly the readings that we hear during Advent season, certainly feel like that save-the-date warning. Jesus is coming, look busy. But I don't believe that's exactly the reaction God is looking for. Instead, here are three ways I hope you can come, you can more deeply approach this rich season and more readily prepare your hearts and minds for the coming of Jesus both in a few weeks and at the last. First, our gospel reading is apocalyptic in nature. Jesus is near the end of his time on earth, and he's trying to explain the implications of God's final arrival. We are given imagery that harkens back to when God flooded the earth as a giant reset button during Noah's time a cunningly forceful being who will snatch away people right in the midst of their daily lives and as a thief in the night. All images that evoke a certain amount of fear, even if respectful fear, of the all-powerful God we serve and worship. But this isn't the only image we're given to cling to. The story ends and begins again, not in power and might, but in the blood and water and love of new birth, the birth of an infant, to be exact, one who was swaddled and held by his mother as he nursed, then learned to crawl, walk, and talk. In the incarnation, Jesus was born of a woman, giving value to attributes historically given to women, yet seen as weak within our society. Empathy, sensitivity, gentleness, and being nurturing. God has, does, and always will come to us with care and kindness, being slow to anger and without the goal of corporal punishment. Enter Advent, then, not with fear or awe that God is untouchable, but with hope that the King of the host of heaven and earth chose to be worshipped first with a mother's kiss. Second, floods and snatching thieves don't invoke trust that we won't get our just desserts when Jesus comes. Perhaps he will treat humanity as we deserve, because we have to admit, even with our best efforts, we've really messed it up down here on more than one occasion. But even if punishment is what we deserve for not loving God and our neighbors, that's not what we receive. My three-year-old has a knack for completely imploding his bedroom with toys, 
and even with household objects that he picks up along the way, like a fort out of the entire new package of paper towel rolls, or his recycling truck filled with tiny pieces of cardboard that he has shredded from the recycling bin. Now, I could tell him over and over to clean his room, but after about the second time, I can see from the look in his eyes how overwhelmed he is. He doesn't even know where to begin. And so I come in and I help him clean up the mess. That's what God coming to us looks like. God did not and will not come to us only to impose shame and guilt, but to help us clean up the mess, to remind us what the world is supposed to look like, and maybe even more importantly, to remind us that the world we've created is not normative. The greed of consumerism, the division of classes, generations, and politics, the sin of racism, and so many more are not meant to be a part of the kingdom of God. So even if it is as a thief, we pray, come, Lord Jesus, help us and point us back toward the path of justice and righteousness, where we can all share in the feast of your banqueting table. Third, God is coming to surprise us. Something I tell my non-religious friends is that part of the allure of following Jesus is that you just can't pass up the euphoria of those Holy Spirit moments, those times when we suddenly recognize that God is fully present. Now, these situations actually have almost nothing to do with God, as God is always fully present, but rather it's our ability to slow down and listen, to attune to the divine that is already there, that helps us connect to what God is saying and asking us to do. God's callings are not always comfortable. God isn't like Santa, who shows up to hand us the beautifully wrapped gift that we have specifically asked for. Rather, God's surprises are more like getting a letter in the mail from an old friend, discovering that you have a lot in common with the person you had already decided you really didn't like, sticking with a new spiritual practice, even though it feels mundane or not worth your time. God comes at unexpected hours, not to give us comfort to maintain the status quo, but to invite us into new life, into surprises that will inspire us and change us for our own flourishing. Now, I don't know when Jesus is coming back for good, but I know that the God who came is still arriving, and he's due December 25th or December 24th at sundown, and I will be here in this room to greet him, and I hope that you will be too. That gives us 27 days, 27 days to practice gentle mothering care, 27 days to practice praying for Jesus to come and helping others clean up the mess. 27 days to open our eyes and ears and be ready for God's presence to upset our daily lives. Jesus is coming. Look, listen, and slow down. Amen.